So you want to find a way to embed your React state into a URL. Well, stick around this video. We will show you exactly how to go about that. Okay. So here I have a simple Star Wars application which is showing a number of people in Star Wars. We have Boba Fett, Lando Calrissian, Lobot, I don't know who that is, and a number of people as well. Right? And you can also search uh, someone in Star Wars. Right? So let's say you want to find Luke Skywalker. So I found Luke Skywalker. Right? A very simple application. All right. So now you could see a problem here. Let's say, for example, I was at page six, right? And I'm seeing uh, a lot of Star Wars characters. But I may have forgotten then went to do some other task, different website, or went to do some other thing and came back to the page and maybe, oh, maybe this page has an audit or something like that. And I decide to reload the page. And as you can see, we are back to square one. We are back at the first page, but the user was supposed to be at page six. So now the user will have to probably go back to other pages or go to page six again. And that is not a good user experience. Let's take for example, the search as well. I'll search for look. I get look, but I reload the page, I lose look. That's not good, right? Let's say, for example, Luke was on a, was not on the first page, but on the last page. Now the user has to go through, try and find Luke or search again, which is not a good user experience. So, how do we find a way around this problem? In my other video, I made, uh, I talked about how to store react state into local storage right and that could be applicable in this scenario we could store the state into local storage and then anytime the user reloads the page he gets back what's stored in the state in local storage and then populates the page with that but what if is a different user that does that hasn't accessed this website yet, but you want to send him, oh, you found a C3PO, right? Or you found the Vader, or you found the Darth Maul, whatever, right? Through searching, right? And you want, to, and you've copied the URL to that person for him to also find this character. He goes to this website with the URL, but now everything is as it is right now. And he has to search for the character again, uh, which is also not a good user experience. The person could be what frustrated that he has to search for something again, and he could leave your website and you've lost a potential what user. That is in the case of using a local storage because he hasn't accessed the page before, therefore it's not in the storage. So he comes to the page, now it's in the storage, and but what he's actually trying to look for, it's not there. He has to search for it before it being populated to what the local storage. And in this case, it's not a very good solution. Now the other solution, as you might already expect, or have expected, is to use the URL because that's what is going to be shared to other people. Now, how do we go about actually getting what's in here or what we've clicked in here into the URL? 
there are a few ways that we could go about it. One is using a third party library, um, which could be a React router or React navigation, any of these popular third party libraries. The other solution is to build, write your own what, implementation of the solution. Right. For both of these paths, there are caveats to it as well. Let's take for example, so let's take the first part, which is using a third party library. For that, you know that it will work, is properly tested, but it could also lead to what, having unwanted code in your application because these libraries tend to have a lot more things that they are catering for than just what you are doing. Which in our case is not what we want. We don't make, want to make our application grow bigger. We just want it small and accessible. So the other alternative is to write your own implementation. Now the downside to that is it could not, it probably will not fulfill a lot of use cases. But in that sense, it's actually good for it. In, in that, we don't want to fulfill multiple use cases. We just want to fulfill a simple use case of placing our state into the URL. Now, how do we go about that? So let's dive right into the code. So here I have a simple React application built using Create React App, which uses TypeScript for type safety. Right. So we are at the start of the application and we have a hook. We have a function here or hook in React terms. Oops, we have use Star Wars people. Uh, don't get me wrong, we are not actually trying to use people in Star Wars. We only want their data for our application. And then we have a simple React component that's rendering whatever is in the use that was people. Right. And the whole logic, the whole everything is actually in use Star Wars people. So let's dive right into use Star Wars people. So Use Star Wars people is a very simple hook, which is making use of a very interesting React hook called Use Reducer. Um, so in Use Reducer, is simply in simple terms, it's just a state manager, a React state manager function, whatever. That just updates what's your state. That's all it does, right? Now it makes it makes use of a reducer function and other parameters as well. In this case, I have people in Star Wars reducer. Now let's check out what people in Star Wars reducer is all about. So people in Star Wars reducer takes in what the state, which is what a reducer state, and an action, which is a reducer action, then returns a reducer state. So as you can see, the beauty of TypeScript. So I've just told you everything about this function 
just from what the type definition of the function very cool right so let's actually take a look at what reduces state is right ah so reducer state is just an object with count people loading page and search and we have uh, and let's check out reducer action right so the reducer state is simply an object with these properties and let's check out the reducer actions so reducer action is simply a set or a union or whichever of objects with each of them requiring a type property and if you've used redox before you must definitely definitely know what this is all about so the type here is just simply defining the kind of action to take right what type of action should i play football should i watch videos whatever that's the kind of action right in this case we are just saying the type and we can see various types of actions cre uh, created here fetch people finish fetching people search for a person in star wars and others now moving on to back to the people reducer we can see it's just going through each so we have a switch statement going through each of the type the fetch people finish fetching people set for a person in star wars and move to the next page which are all action types from our actions right and let's see here so which is actually making updates to the state based on the type of action to take so in this case fetch people we are just stating that loading should be fetch set to fetching because from the reduced state we can see that these are the types that loading or types of states that loading can be in right now back to the reducer to the next case which is finished fetching people is simply updating the states to set loading to none the people so the results they fetch the data that we fetch from the api we place the results into people then the count because the api also provides us with a count value right the total number of people in star wars right or um, more specifically the total number of people that have been shown in the star wars movies right. so we have the counts then search for a person in star wars simply setting the loading to searching then the search what we are actually searching then the page to one because anytime you want to search for something you want to start at the first page then lastly we have move to the next page right which has some action payload which is updating a state with whatever the payload is in this case it's just what the page number right and these uh, these actions are being called or returned by these functions start fetching people in star wars store fetch people in star wars start searching for a person and move to the next page right that's all it's doing is just returning the various types of actions to take to what the reducer now let's move back to use star wars people So we've gone through our use reducer state with the reducer and the initial state. So initial states, let's see what's in there. 
are is simply the use reducer state so it's an object of the type use reducer state and it has some initial values for the state so that's all it's doing then we move on to the next line so here we are grabbing the page and the search right then we have our favorite most used uh, second in what popularity of all the react hooks is use effect the most popular react hook is definitely the use state hook right? everyone knows that so in the use effect we simply fetch people in star wars to stick to. and go into the nitty-gritty of it we have a dispatch right so let me explain a little bit on what dispatch is so dispatch is a function in which it will cause a state update in the what reducer so all the various actions that we've defined here right we can send them off into what dispatch and it will cause the corresponding what state updates it looks a little bit complex but trust me it's quite simple as you when you get used to it right so in this case i'm dispatching an action to start fetching people in star wars right then here i have an api request get people in star wars right let's take a look at what get people in star wars is all about so it's taking in the page and then the search interesting and then creating a query param from the page in the search right and then appending that in this so it creates a query param here and then adds that towards the url or to the path of the url right and then sends that off to get star wars instance let's go into get star wars instance so we have the base URL for the Star Wars API and we fetch the, from the Star Wars API combining with the path and then return a JSON response because that's what we want. And next we have the get API response data. So whatever data it is, we we'll format it correctly for the application to understand the data and let's if there's any error that happens whilst we are fetching the data uh, we send that off to get api response uh, api error response for it to be formatted neatly for the application to understand uh, to understand the error nice right. so that's all that's going on in get people in star wars so we get a response and then we send that response towards this to this action store fetch people in star wars which will then dispatch that action toward the reducer and then update correspondingly with the data so we can get the people into star wars from star wars <laughs> and then we have a couple of fun couple of functions here fetch people in next page so moving on to a next page right we dispatch the action for that with the active page and then fetch people which match search query so when we search for someone in star wars there's the action or the dispatch that happens right okay and we return the states and both of those functions right? nice and so that's all for the use star wars people now for the rest is simply just a react rendering rendering of react components but uh, i won't delve much into it just all we know that we have a search input people list and then the pagination right i will leave this link to the source code in the video description so that you guys can take a better look at what actually is going on in here okay 
Now, back to our application and continue on with what we actually want to achieve, which is finding a way to place our states into the URL, right? So that other people can make use of it. Or even when we load the page, we can have access to it. Right. So how do we go about this problem? Um, let's move on to the use that was people because this is where we actually need uh, need to perform this implementation. So we know that um, in React, the use effect, right? It's always it will be it will be called any time there is a change in what state, right? And with that in mind, we can perform the action that we actually need because any time I search for something, let's say look, I search for look. I want to place the search value into the state or I make I move to another page I want this value to be placed into uh, the URL that's what I want so to achieve that we need the use effect right? So I'm going to have my react use effect. So we have our use effect and we only want this, uh, this use effect to run whenever we have a change in the page and the search. Awesome. Now, Now we have this. How do we actually get the page and the set, the page and the search into the URL itself? Remember, in, remember that URLs are just strings, so we can't actually, you know, place this there directly, right? Page is a number, search is a string. We could actually place search in there, but page not. We need to convert that into what a string. And remember, in the get people in Star Wars, I've created I've created a couple of help of helper functions for us, which is create query params from objects, so we can send in an object and it will convert that object into what a query param. Or a query string and if you are not too familiar with query strings it's simply something like this right so we have your path and then you have your question mark and then we have a girl is equal to something right so you have your value so this is a query string and if you have multiple things that you want to place into the query string you will get m percent right then you continue on with your values, right? So this is what a query parameter, right? And that's what this function is doing for us. Right? Um, so I'm simply going to, oopsies, just copy this entire line right here and then place that here. And VS Code knows that we've not imported it, so we need to import that. And then remove empty fields in object. Just as the name suggests, it's just removing empty fields in object. So if page there's nothing in page, it will remove it. If there's nothing in search, it will also remove that as well. 
Okay. Now we have our query parameter. Right. How do we actually please add this query parameter to the URL? You may be tempted to go by this method window.location.href is equal to window.location.href plus our query parameter. And you are not wrong on that sense because we just need to grab the href, add that query parameter, and then, you know, place that in towards the href on uh, the page right? so let's save that and let's see how the browser handles a case like this okay ah you can see we have some very very horrible re-rendering right this is just terrible now why is this happening This is happening because we have our query parameter and the URL, right? We add both of them and then place that into what the href. And the browser, by default, it will reload the page. So once it, once it reloads that page, it will keep on doing that. Because it will keep on doing that. So. How do we fix this issue? Right. First, let's get rid of this entire line. So we don't want that, right? Now, there is a property in the window document that can help us achieve what we want and also not cause the problem that the location href was doing right. and this property is the windows history so we go to window then we have the history right. the windows history now it comes with various what functions and properties which can help us to perform various actions on the page a few of these is back forward go as the name suggests just move navigating the pages then we have length uh, length of what the history the number of items already in the history we have pushed it replaced it and a few others as well what we are actually interested in is replace state now why is that Replace, the reason why we are going for replace state is because we want to update the state of the page we are in without going back, without moving forward or even adding anything to the page or adding anything to the history. So that's why we need to we need the replace state. Push state, we are just adding to the history, which is not what we want. We actually want to replace the history, right? replace the current state we are in. And replace state, as you can see, takes in a number of arguments the data, the title, and the URL. The data is the data that you want to place into what the location is, what state. Um, maybe you want to keep some stuff into what the uh, history or in, 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 in the history to a state. When you navigate to another page, you can grab that from the state or whatever. It's just data that you're keeping in there. Title, as you can already suggest, is just a title of the page. That's all. Then we come towards the URL. Right? This is what actually we need. 
URL in the sense that we just want to add our query parameter to the URL of the page. That's what we want. Now, <coughs> let's place in some default values for the first two parameters. So the data just want to place in an empty object. Don't really care about it. But the URL, I want to add our query parameter. So we save that. And as you can see, the page is actually the URL is updated with the page that we are on right now, but we are not having all that re-rendering, all that look uh, what browser reloading, all the updates to our URL. We are not having that. So this is why we are going for the history. So we are just updating the history of the page without actually causing the browser to reload. Now I can go to the next page and you can see that it's updated. So if I were to search for look again, you can see that it was properly what updated. But let's see, I reload the page. We can see that our state is there, but see I let's go to the eighth page I reload it then moves back toward page one but that's not what we, I want I want to still be at page eight with the data showing for page eight that is what I want and then this leads to another question why is this happening so let's go back to the code. And the reason for that is because of the initial state. So if you take a look at the initial state, you can see that always the page is one, then the search is empty. This is the reason why. When the application mounts or loads, we know that this effect will be called with a page and then the search, which in turn will set the page back toward page one and get rid of all the search, which is not what we want, right? So we need a way in order to update the state or update the initial state with what's already in the URL, right? And to do that, we need the third parameter of the use reducer. So if you take a look at it, the third parameter is an initializer in which the initializer is simply a function which takes in the default state or the current state of the reducer and then returns what a new state right so let's create our function so it takes in what the state at the start or the state and then we need to return that state. Let's format it correctly. So this is where we actually need to initialize our state with what's already in the URL. Right. And how do we get access to the data in the URL? Right. Well, I have written a couple of functions to help us in that regard. You can take a look at it in the URL, uh, in the 
source code itself when you get the time. So these functions are get objects from URL query parameters. So which will take in the query parameter and then convert that into an object. Right. Uh, I don't need to go into the actual implementation in this video, but if you want, um, just leave a comment below or leave a comment and then uh, I could what, describe this the implementation in another video. Then we have a strat object in URL. So which will take in a full URL and then pick out what the object or convert the entire URL to the object that we need. Right. So these are the functions that we need, or more specifically, a strat object in URL is a function that we need. Right. So in, in order to uh, move a little bit quicker, I've already written a couple, uh, the, I've already written something to well, help us quickly. Right. So let me just paste that in there. Right. And then I'll explain it. So let me format this problem. Right. So extract objects in URL and we are defining the type of objects that it should return from what? The URL, right? And we can get the pages what URL using window location href. So it will give us what the current URL of the current of the page. So we check to see if there's any data in what the argument if there's anything in what the, the url if there's nothing we return the default state so def so it will be what the initial state else we combine the states that we have here with what we have in what the url right? and then return that so let's save that and then let's check the page right so if I were to move to page five, I see Darth Maul here, a very cool character. If I were to reload the page, I still stay at what page five and I still see Darth Maul, right? Let's say I'm going to search for uh, another character. Uh, don't really know the name. Uh, let's say uh, Layla, right? Do we have Layla Organa? <laughs> yes, we do have Layla Organa. Awesome. So, if I reload the page, I still see Layla Organa. And if I were to copy this page and send it to another person through WhatsApp, Twitter, any social media platform, and they go to that page, yes, get it? They can actually see layer organa or whatever that you they want to see right yes so that's it very simple way of placing your react state into the url right. and if you have any uh, suggestions or comments uh, if you have any suggestions please please leave them in the comments below and if this video has been helpful please leave a like or if it's not helpful give it a dislike anything that you want to do and subscribe for more videos like this right and i'll see you all in the next video thanks with the with the